Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. My name is Paul. If Scorpio is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. It's totally free, doesn't cost you anything. All right? Uh, new readings for Scorpio Wednesday and Sunday. Okay. If there's anything you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Scorpio, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And a Three of Cups, that's very appropriate for this time of year, I think. Celebration, love, abundance, this is uh, appreciation, this is gratitude, this is um, kind of, this is the feeling that, that we appreciate life, that we appreciate others in our lives, and it's kind of a time to, to celebrate ourselves, but celebrate each other too. I like this card. It's a very good card to start with. We're going to put that into some context, though, of course, and see what else might be going on with you at this time in your life. Oh, look at that. Now, see, now we really have that because we've got the three and we're doubling that into a six. So we have this abundance. I think you're really feeling um, a, a tremendous inner joy right now. And I think this joy is really kind of overwhelming you, and it can't help but seep out into your relationships, you know? So I think that this is really a time for bonding with others, for appreciating others, for maybe putting aside differences, right? We've got another six here. We've got some air on either side of us here. That's interesting. An eight of cups, a four of cups, the high priestess and another air card. Another court card, Queen of Swords here at the end. So it really feels to me a lot of air, right? A lot of water. It feels like it, this is a very important time to communicate, right? To tell the people in your life that you love them. But let's select the mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. This is one random card from the Smith Waite Tarot. We're just going to Put it over here. We're going to put our friend Alien Simon Mork Ripley right there on top. We're not going to look at that card until the very end, right? But, you know, it will tie everything together and it will give us the confirmation that we need at the end of the reading. If at any point during the reading you feel like you know what that might be, put your prediction down in the comments. All right, let's do it together. Let's make it a group exercise in intuition. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. All right, let's take a, a quick survey here. The only major we have is this High Priestess, all right? And I think that's going to be very significant. It's also the card that seems to be the most difficult. Um, I almost feel like um, it, it's the difficult part is for us to really use the words, right? It's almost as if um, we just kind of think everybody already knows how we feel, right? So it's kind of like an unspoken uh, sentiment in the room here where we really need to Kind of use some of this air energy and start communicating, you know, with words uh, in a very kind of um, overt way rather than the subtlety of the high priestess here. We've got a little bit of fire. Um, we do have a lot of water. We've got quite a bit of air as well. And we have just a little bit of earth. All right. So overall, it's, it's fairly balanced, but it's very heavy on the water, obviously. Now, to start with this Three of Cups, you understand the process of creation on the emotional plane. And what that means is that you understand um, what uh, having this abundance of love in your heart, like joy and um, an appreciation for others. You kind of know, like, how to bring that into a room, you know. I think you're a very, you're a very expressive person. I feel that you really you tend to not hide your emotions. And we've got a lot of emotions here. We do. We even have some not so positive ones with the Eight of Cups here. Um, but I feel as if you really, you understand how 
emotions are communicated not necessarily always through words, which is kind of I think what the what the difficulty here is is learning how to take what is just a vibe, what is kind of a an energy in the room and having an open conversation. Yeah. Because I feel like um I feel as if when you walk into a room, people can feel it. You know, people um and it's not always going to be the the best mood, right? People know what you're feeling just when you kind of enter their presence. Because you radiate this kind of emotional energy right now. And I think some people in your life are very sensitive to that and and they can feel that. Now there might even be a misinterpretation of some of that emotional energy and that could be why we've got the 8 of cups down here. So I think that if there is any kind of um emotional miscommunication, I think now's the time to really have that conversation with this person, okay? And they might be an air sign person in your life. There's a, there's a lot of air here with the knight of swords, the prince of swords, the queen of swords. So I wonder if this is, you know, one particular person in your life. It, it could be, um, it could be a close friend. It could be a sibling, right? Uh, it could be, it could be a romantic partner. You know, we see a little bit of indication of that in this four of cups in the position of your relationships. And it's kind of like you feel all this love in your heart and you really are wanting to connect. And I think that it's really, this is the perfect time for you to start um, reaching out and taking the initiative to make those heart to heart connections with people. Yeah. Maybe one particular person in your life, because I feel as if the relationship with that person is kind of been on ice a little bit. And it's almost because, well, they know I love them. You know, I don't have to tell them all the time. They know it. Well, maybe this is the time in your life where it's, it's important to kind of reconfirm that, to strengthen that, to, to shore that up a little bit, you know, through, um, through communication, because we do, we've got a lot of that air energy here. Um, but you're definitely someone that likes to feel good. You like to have those moments with people. You know, I think you feel so much love in you, so much creativity. You feel so blessed. And I think you're connecting with other people in the same way who feel the same way. See, not only do we have that three of cups within you, representing you, but now it's connecting with others, with things out in the environment, other people, um, you know, experiences. And I think this is a very important time for you to strengthen those bonds again maybe with one particular person but i think in general you know let's let's strengthen those emotional ties those deeper spiritual bonds with the people in our lives with our loved ones yeah um the the six of um the six of wands up here is interesting especially when i'm, I'm kind of also looking at this eight of cups i wonder if you've had in your life, um, if you've had a near-death experience, perhaps, because I feel as if you've, I feel as if you've overcome a lot, and this I think has, um, this has allowed for you to to really cultivate um, a sense of love and gratitude and appreciation, but a sense of like really cherishing the bonds that you have with other people. Yeah, so I think you, you've, you've overcome something very significant, something that maybe most people would have not fared so well, let's say. Okay. Um, and this, I think, is it's really part of your identity now. You know, you're, you're a, a survivor, you're an overcomer. Um, could be an injury or an illness or something in your past. I think it, it was something quite serious. But I think now, um, now this is kind of a, a motivating force in your life. You know, I think it, um, it's almost, uh, it's almost a lodestar. It's almost a, um, an experience by which you value or judge your relationships. You know, it's kind of like um, because you went through this, that you you only want quality, p 
people in your life. You're looking for those really authentic relationships. Yeah. And I think that has um, also provided you with a little bit of kind of uh, caution in your life. Here's the eight of pentacles underneath everything. And this is um, kind of erring on the side of caution. This is prudence. This is um, if there's a question of whether to act or not act, I think you kind of take the hands-off approach. And, and by letting things kind of blossom on their own, um, you're able to really see the essence of the thing. You know, by, by standing back and kind of minimally intervening with people, or with, with circumstances, or with, with others' lives, I guess. Um, it gives you a chance to see how they are growing, what they kind of, what their essence is, what they blossom into. Yeah. Maybe you have kids. Maybe this is, um, maybe this is an approach that you have to life in general, right? Where it's just trying not to interfere, trying to let things just grow naturally and organically. But I do see right now there's this need for some communication, not necessarily interference, not necessarily, and well, we, I guess we don't want it to get to that point, but there's some relationship now that really needs your involvement. And I think it is an air sign person in your life. Um, <clears throat> I can't tell if this is going to be a male or a female uh, energy. It's it seems like it's it's some of everything. So it might be not one particular person, but it might be the whole family. It might be that you um, have been a little bit distanced from your, your family, uh, from your blood family, maybe. But I think this is really a time, and maybe the Six of Cups is foreshadowing that, um, that y'all are going to get together soon. And uh, it's important to really make the most of that. Yeah, it's important to use that as an opportunity to try to strengthen those bonds. Yeah, because I feel like they are important to you. And um, I feel like the communication wasn't always very pleasant. Here's this is the the knight of uh, the knight of swords in the past position, and this makes me wonder if it's kind of been tumultuous, maybe a little bit, even hostile at times. Um, and I don't, I think it's because there's just a lot of strong opinions there because your family member, they seem to have the same kind of intensity that you have, um, where they, uh, they have strong opinions. Let's, let me just leave it at that. Um, because I feel like a lot of the time there is, um, everybody kind of means well, but when the conversation really starts to get deep or hit on kind of sensitive topics, um, there can be a little bit of, a little bit of animosity, a little bit of friction starts going on there, right? And so I think this is kind of, again, one of those indications that it's just kind of a hands-off approach to family. Just kind of let, let people do their thing. They know I love them. You know, we have this connection, but perhaps it is time to, um, you know, to reach, use this as an opportunity, use this time of year as an opportunity to strengthen those bonds. Yeah. And um, it could be, now we, we move over to this, the Prince of Swords here in the, in the kind of future position. I don't know, if, I don't think this is past and future, really. But I feel like this is the other side of the, the coin here. The communication has kind of fallen behind because I feel like you don't always agree with their decisions. But again, you have this kind of live and let live, um, hands-off, non-interference kind of approach um, to let things grow and develop as they will. And I think ultimately you, you would have chosen something else for this person or maybe for the family in general, or maybe it's... Um, maybe it's a couple fan, maybe it's the siblings, maybe it's the parents or whatever it is. But I feel like we're not really communicating that or you have tried in the past, but it never really amounts to much, right? So again, there's this kind of, you know, hands-off approach. Um, 
And the, the problem here is that we don't want to express our opinions and judge other people and tell them, I don't agree with the decisions that you're making, um, when what we're trying to do is have a very pleasant and pleasurable experience, right, with these cups here in the middle. Um, if this is kind of a holiday gathering or if this is an event that's kind of coming together, if this is just that time of year where those feelings start to arise, where you, you're starting to kind of think about the bond that you have with the family, right? And it could be a blood family, chosen family. This could be a group of friends. Um, it could be coworkers, honestly. Wherever it's taking place, um, we don't want to spoil the pleasurable experience, right? But at the same time, we kind of have to have a conversation and we have to be able to connect with, with these these folks but we don't want to do so in a way where it's just kind of the same way it usually goes um with maybe criticism or just kind of um differing opinions you know but i feel like with this card with the prince of swords there's this almost a um almost a fundamental disagreement with how each of you live your lives you know, like you just, you kind of operate from a, a different set of principles, you know, so there's this, this underlying um, adversity. But I think what we're seeing with the high priestess and with the queen of swords is that we need to rise above that and, um, you know, find, find that connection that goes beyond just the kind of the stuff that we see here, right? This is a, a transcendent um, understanding and, and bonding that we could be experiencing. We're going to move to the path of the serpent now. And as I do this, I'd like to ask for your subscription. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. doesn't cost you anything. Right. Uh, and leave some comments for me. Let me know where in the world you're watching from. Okay. I appreciate all of you. Okay. So we start now with this eight of cups and this is, um, this is the way I think that you usually are looking at this kind of Maybe this time of year, the fact that this is a holiday gathering is, is coming on again. It's the, this is the time where everybody gets together and you're just kind of not looking forward to it. Um, it's, um, it's kind of like a, a mixed feeling. Sometimes we feel like, well, maybe this is the year that everybody's going to really connect. You know, it really is going to be something significant. And then I think the other side of you is just like, this is going to be worse than last year. You know, we're kind of fluctuating between optimism and pessimism, glass half full and glasses uh, half empty. And there's a crack in the glass and it's draining. Um, so we're kind of, we're not sure what to expect. We, we're kind of hoping for the best, but expecting the worst with this one. Yeah. And I think because it's always kind of been quite, the same most years you know some years maybe are better or worse than others but it, it kind of goes the same way um but i do i do wonder about this four of, of cups here because to me this really does feel like there's some relationship that's just kind of gone cold now maybe this is between you and the family generally Maybe there's one particular person. Maybe this is a separate relationship altogether. But I feel like this card, because it's in the position of your environment and your relationships, that it's kind of talking generally. That generally there is this underlying assumption that, yeah, you know, we all are connected. We all love each other. It's fine, whatever. But in terms of the actual relationship and communication, I feel like it's gone cold, you know? I feel like it's just kind of uh, stagnant. Yeah, there is that underlying assumption that, yeah, we're all family, whatever, but we don't really, we don't share much. We don't talk much. Um, there's just this uh, almost an isolation, almost a coldness, right? Where there should, you would think there would be warmth, right? Well, maybe the high priestess here is, is really trying to tell us something significant. Maybe there is something that, maybe there is, is kind of um, more of a backstory here. Maybe there is something that hasn't been talked about. Maybe there's an underlying issue 
um, that is just kind of not being discussed, hasn't been discussed, maybe from years past, right? Sometimes the high priestess says, there's a secret. Yeah, there's a secret. Um, I don't know if this has anything to do with um, a relative that has passed. Um, there's some sort of there's some sort of issue surrounding that that nobody is isn't out in the open yet. Maybe there's that's part of this disagreement. Perhaps is that there was differing opinions or decisions that were made that you don't agree with or they don't agree with the decisions you made. So there's something underlying that situation that hasn't been talked about. Um, <clears throat> I'm getting some, uh, 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 I'm getting a picture of pearls. I don't know if there's some sort of uh, heirloom or jewelry or something to do with the estate that hasn't really been addressed. And I think it's from the past, right? But I think it's, there's still this grudge kind of thing. Yeah. Um, there's still something to do with that. And I'll, I also feel like, um, I also feel like there's part of this, uh, I, you know, <clears throat> I feel like it's a very warm and loving environment, but there is this kind of underlying thing that nobody talks about, you know? Um, I kind of see you just like on the couch, like, like sitting with the family dog, you know, and just, um, feeling the warmth and the love there, but, and not really, not really mingling. Yeah. Not really mingling. Uh, the final card now, we've got, of course, the Queen of Swords. And this is, this is clarity. This is the card that kind of tries to rise above everything else. And, well, maybe this is, maybe coming off the High Priestess, this Queen is saying, we, we need to get over this kind of weird coldness um, that we feel. And maybe we need to have this discussion. Maybe this needs to, needs to be said. Right. Um, you know, maybe. Well, then it, the tarot's not going to tell you what to do. Okay, um, it, it's not going to advise you to take a certain course of action. Because then it's responsible, right? So with the high priestess and the queen of swords, it's kind of there's two ways we could go with this. The high priestess could be saying, "Shh, it's not worth bringing it up." Right. Rise above those kind of feelings. Just have a good time. Enjoy it. Strengthen the bonds uh, with, with these folks, with these family members, friends, whatever they are. And try to let the past be the past. Right. Maybe it's not worth bringing it up. It up. Of course, <clears throat> the high priestess and the queen of swords could be saying the exact opposite. Maybe it is high time that you brought it up. Maybe rising above the the concern right because you know that once you once you bring this subject up once it gets out in the open once people start talking about it opening up a can of worms you pretty much know how the night's gonna go right so the queen of swords is saying yeah you already know that so rise above that do what you need to do maybe this is something that you you need to talk about for your own well-being Maybe it's part of your healing, right? But then again, maybe not. Maybe the, the high priestess is saying, um, you know, this is something that, that doesn't need to be addressed. Again, the tarot's not going to tell you what to do. Um, <clears throat> looking at the cards and all this air energy, it feels like there is a conversation that needs to take place. Yeah. Uh, Let's take a look at the mystery card, though. Let's see what's going on over here. All right. Let's see what our alien friend has for us. Okay. Um, let's see. This, this may be maybe some earth energy, maybe some more fire energy. Yeah. I really don't have much of a prediction here. I... Maybe we'll get, um, 
Well, maybe we'll get your power card, right? Maybe we'll get the death card. Maybe I'm kind of feeling the justice or adjustment card here. Yeah. And that to me would kind of say, well, look, we're going to have this difficult conversation because it's what needs to happen. And, you know, it will have to suffer the consequences, but it feels like in the end, it's going to be well worth it. It's going to be, even if it's just worth it for you, right? Because it's going to kind of um, release a lot of this abundance of emotion that you've got right now. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. If you have a prediction, put it down in the comments, okay? Well, we've got strength or lust, bravery, courage. Um, but again, this could go either way, right? The tarot's not going to tell you what to do. This could be the strength, the bravery, and the courage to have this conversation, to, you know, bring, bring up this issue if it is something that's weighing on you. Uh, if it is something that kind of needs to get out in the open so that everyone can move past it, right? But this card's also saying, get control of yourself. Right. With all of this kind of, with all the emotion here, it'd be easy to maybe kind of lash out, right? Or just kind of let it come flooding out. Have a little bit of restraint and discipline. Don't lose control, basically is what this card's saying, right? Keep a, keep a, a handle on yourself so that you don't just, it doesn't start just pouring out of you, right? Stay calm. Stay in control. Stay, you know, poised. So I think this is, I think this is going to be good. I think this is a necessary um, step for you. Now we're going to do an extended reading as well. If you want to stick around, click on the link that's either above or below in the video description. Um, new readings for Scorpio Wednesdays and Sundays, but I'm here every day. You can come back again and see me tomorrow. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's totally free. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, and leave a comment for me. Right? I appreciate all the comments. Uh, I want you to know that you're the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot. I thank you and I love you. And we're all in this together.